Tight one in here. Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron. I like that. White Darth Vader PSP. Nice unit. Oh, collectible. That's great. Customize your weapons better you can. Dude, get your own. Star Wars Battlefront Entertainment Pack. PSP. Why won't the site load? It's, it's loading. Be it's patient. Loading. Street Fighter is important. This is it's probably getting a lot of hits. Yep. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Nice. Nice. It looks nice. nice. What, what that doesn't look like yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme. It has a little bow to it. It has nothing to do with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Wow. So what? It's not my problem. Move closer. Why is the so good? He's not in it either. He's dead now. move your head. I'm just, I'm really happy with the amount of detail. I mean, it looked weird when I first saw it because it's like, it's 3D and you know, you expect the muscles and everything. Get out of my way. What the fuck? Come on. Zoom in. Guy right oh, here. It, does look, it does look good. Though. This is the guy. Yeah, Dude, now we know where his fireball comes from. Dude, I got I gotta know more. Ryan, what's up? You were there. Dude. Dude, tell us more. I gotta know. Well, you know there's an embargo, right? Is Guile in it? Uh, Chung Lee? Chung Lee's thighs? Chun Lee's in it. I can say that. I can tell you that Chun Lee's in it. Anything else? It's got Kenny Ryu. And it's, no shit, come it's on. Three, it's 3D. It looks awesome. It looks really it does neat. Look awesome. Awesome. They got have veins in their arms. I, I gotta, I gotta know one. Hey, I don't wanna go to work today. Wanna stay home and play all my video games on the one up show. You know you'll be a star on the one up show. You already are. Incoming! I mean, it, it seems like the PC version, other than having a faster frame rate, actually is faster than the PS3 version. Yeah, I'm pretty damn sure that the movement speed's like substantially faster on this one, because I went over and played the PS3 one, and it was night and day. Because I kept wondering, I was like, there's no way, this game is so fast, there's no way that people are going to be able to play it with a controller, you know? Yeah, it, yeah, and I mean, I mean the, the movement speed because of the mouse, I mean, you can aim faster, and theoretically you can hook up a keyboard and mouse to the PS3 <coughs> version too, so you can solve that. But yeah, I mean, the game just feels slower as far as movement speed is concerned. Yeah, I mean, I think, and that's a, the, like, that's, like, I don't want to confuse that so that's like a bad thing. I think it's actually no, I mean, it makes sense. You know? we, the funny thing was but, that, yeah, you actually said you kind of preferred it yeah. in a sense when you were playing it. <clears throat> on this, like, even on PC, it's just a little too chaotic. It's just, it's like a trade off between being able to have the average player or even, you know, the slightly above average player feel that for every time he shoots, that there's a reasonable amount of time, that he has a reasonable chance of hitting someone. And then when it gets too spastic, you know, when you're in too, the, you're too close to one another and you're moving too fast and everyone's jumping and your weapons all have like a slow rate of fire, like the link gun or something, um, and you feel like, hey, maybe I'm landing about like, you know, 20% of my shots, then it starts to get frustrating. And you've got aircraft, you've got artillery, you've got, you know, all these super, super lightning quick vehicles, you have people sniping, rockets, you throw every variable in there. When you have a million ways to die, and you're never clear what's killing you. It's hard to know what to do next in order to improve your play or to know that, okay, now I know I need to take this guy out who's like hiding up here, shooting out of a rocket at every vehicle that goes down the canyon. I don't I am liking it, but I think in a lot of ways, uh, Unreal Tournament 3 is kind of a step back. Um, assault Mode was my favorite mode in 2004, and, and what's fun about Assault Mode was that yeah, you're killing everybody essentially, but you were forced to work as a team to complete certain objectives. You can do a lot of the objectives in Real Tournament as a one-man Rambo just making it through things. It's not 
inherent to the gameplay to finishing objective to to work as a team and that's one of the things I think it's going to help out with the PS3 version is that you don't need uh, you know especially on consoles people that are using voice chat are just you know calling you a wide variety of slurs and stuff right. like that. so you can't unless you're starting with a group of people that you are established with you can't really employ any any team tactics I mean, I think it's a fair criticism, though, in general, because it's like, I mean, you know, I've been playing PC, and I don't see very much cooperation, um, and that could just be, I was I picked the wrong game, you know, and I can't, like, say it's categorical about the game. But it's got voice chat, and it has the means to do it. It does lack something like Battlefield 2, where you're able to, or 2142, where you create a squad, and you can always agree to spawn together, and you, like, know where each other's at in the world and stuff, you know, here, because you die so quick and you spawn so instantaneously, it's like, it's pretty easy to get separated from people and to kind of just like rush things like in one after another and it's like you, you would kind of need a client or something to say hey this is going to be our spawn point we're going to wait we're going to leave in a group whatever we're going to use this vehicle we're going to have this mm -hmm. you know stuff like that the necros vehicles and stuff are fantastic you know when i when you first go into a world and you see either the, the big walker going by or someone in the little orb uh, that has the retractable feet and then it can yes, put them in different little, configurations. Little Metroid ball. Yeah, I mean those things look and it can actually walk up walls and stuff. I mean they look so good when you see them. Even like the Viper, it's alt fire and they have such like excellent ideas. You know, on the concept stage, you're like, okay, this is actually really cool. You know, you, you sort of lift up and it's actually got these air brakes that, that fan out and then it gives you the option to eject yourself from the seat and then turn the thing into a self-destruct, you know, mechanism and a missile and then launch and it will then yeah, shoot it's a itself. Bomber. Yeah, I mean those things like like oh that's such a great idea. And it's like I want to I really want to have the fun playing with them. And it's just like so far I mean, like a, a, an invisible, a, a self-cloaking mine-laying vehicle, all these things. You don't see any equivalent to these in other shooters uh, with vehicles of this category. But for some reason, I'm not getting it. <laughs> it doesn't really, the game doesn't make me angry or anything, but it doesn't like, I feel kind of indifferent when I play it a lot, you know? And it's like, in, to confession, it's like, you know, Unreal Tournament 2004 was never my favorite game, so that's part of it. And there's always this question, like, well, who is it for? And we're talking about the speed. Well, oh, well, it's not for you. But it's like, you can't just say, well, you like slow games, because I don't. It's like, you know, if I'm into Quake Wars, it's relatively fast. And same for, you know, Team Fortress Classic and other games like that. So I kind of running into this thing where I'm wondering now if they're cutting to too thin of a slice for who this game's for. Is it for just this very, very small percentage of people who play shooters that want just the super cracked out speed and that kind of experience? And it could be any number of reasons for it, but for, for whatever the reason, there are very few people playing this game on PC online right now. On PC, if you want to go into CTF, or, for example, you might find two servers that have people in them playing. I found like right now, when I, as I last looked, um, there were about 10 to 12 occupied warfare servers. Now compare that to you know like four, th three to 4,000 active Team Fortress 2 servers in any given time of the day. I mean, that, that's a startling, difference. And I think that's indicative of the shooter market being so oversaturated right now as far as that kind of um, gameplay on the PC side of concern. But on the PS3, that's one of my favorite parts is that uh, I don't like dealing with people online a lot. And I don't have a lot of friends that own PS3s right now except for people that are in the office. And the fact that there are bots and there are literally no shooters on console that have bots right now. Right. moment but at the same time something that epic has done with ut3 is started making the bots talk right and I, does this do this on the pc version too when they're you're just playing constantly taunting yeah they're just constantly they're basically saying like these retarded lines the that people say online and as far as i know there's no way to turn to shut them up yeah. so while you're playing a bot experience which should be the this uh, sort of solo experience with these AI controlled that, you know, whatever, they're good, they're bad, at least someone's doing something other than standing around. They're talking trash all the time yeah. and saying all these douchebaggy lines. There's like, this is the whole reason I'm playing with bots, so I don't have to deal with these people online, but they've brought the douchebag experience to the bots. I don't know, maybe it's one of those games that'll develop over time, and especially well, one of my favorite parts about the Unreal series is the mod community. And I don't know how much it's developed yet on the PC version. I mean, it's only been out a couple of weeks, but have you yeah. downloaded any mods or experienced that at all? I think people are trying to find an occupied server for the game that they bought <laughs> until they get until they get the other. But yeah, I mean, they've Epic has just been tops. They've been absolutely among the best when it goes to mod support. Some you know the great mods of the last gen were based on their engines and stuff. Um, games that became retail like Red Orchestra, Osfront. I'll be interested to see what happens 
as far as you know when people start incorporating licensed content or something like that i mean i know in unreal in previous unreal tournaments people have literally made like whole halo mods mm -hmm. um in the series and epic has said that because sony is hands off as far as filtering this content uh that you'll see shit like that and i'll be interested to see how that plays in the console world because consoles have never had to deal with you know license based user generated content that's right. just not that's just not the way it works the user generated content in the console world is like a character creation exactly screen. it's gonna be interesting because you could do like i mean theoretically you could make say a star wars mod you can make the equivalent of battlefront which is funny because that was actually a battlefield mod before you know, LucasArts was like, hey, that's a good idea, let's do that, you know. <laughs> I remember that, So yeah. you can actually, I mean, just, I don't know if that's going to be problematic for them to know that that people are playing for free, the equivalent of a Star Wars game on their PS3. I mean, there's nothing like Unreal Tournament on the PS3, <laughs> yeah. so I'm hoping that because it's so different, because it's a different kind of shooter, and there's really um, not that many options in the shooter market this fall on the PS3, especially with a game like this, that maybe their kind of relationship will be kind of symbiotic and they'll be able the ps3 community will be able to help the pc community in that respect yeah, i can almost see like more people buying it for ps3 it's kind of weird but but just because of that like you said their options are fewer it looks great and they're like they look they know here's the game from the makers of gears of war that was hot and probably picking it up you know they're not trying the demo and not as picky as pc you know guys at this point in time so we'll see We'll see what happens to Unreal. <laughs> <laughs>
can't help notice that once again, Brian comes to my cube dressed like me. I feel like the odd man out here. I should have worn a well, blue striped I, shirt. Well, I strive to be like the best. I have one. I realized that Matt is one of the best, so I just try to be like him. That's understandable. Else. So we all start Dark Sector. The emo Gears of War. He does sort of look like that. I don't care. I think the game looks good. You know, for a game that, you know, was dubbed like the first next gen game has gone through like so many different Now who dubbed it that? I think we all did. I think, I think well, it, it, it they was were the first yeah. ones to show. So, like, that tech they, they said they were running on some type of technology, and then, like they later told me, like there was not even a game there. Like it was just like that. It was a CG video. Yeah, that video yeah. and that was it. I've been down this game for a long time. I didn't think there was much to it. I thought it was too slow paced before, and now I think it, it feels much more like an action game. They add like an adrenaline shot now, yeah. so I feel like it seems pretty good. Well, when I first dropped into it, I was like, okay, it's a Gears of War clone. <laughs> I mean, everything, like the roll, the roadie run, everything felt immediately like Gears of War, but then once you got your glaive, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's glaive. Your glaive, be, yeah. the combat actually started to flush out a little bit with all the like little attributes that you can get for it. They definitely need more time. Obviously, they want to come out this holiday when you probably got killed sales-wise, but they added dual wielding to it yes, so that you can now like awesome. hold the gun and the glaive and kind of go crazy. And I feel like that has kind of helped the pacing of fights oh, where it kind of, it, it is definitely feels more action-oriented rather than kind of just stealthily moving around and using, and like always using the glaive. So I, weird looking on the screen, you're like, you know, holding the gun and then throwing the glaive out like this. I mean, it's definitely more effective and better yeah. for the game, but it's, it's a little funny. <laughs> If you sit there and just throw the glaive at guys, you have to wait for it to come back and it can get really repetitive. The fact that they gave you shooting to do, that you can run towards an enemy after he's stunned to do that like, oh, like the sweet like the death god, kill the, right the, on him. Basically the god of war. Yeah. Like, every enemy has a different kind of finishing move. So and some of them are really cool. Like they kind of take the glaive and just like go all the way up their body and stuff like that. Or My like favorite thing to do with the glaive is where you can throw it to pick up guns and stuff and items that have oh, fallen. Like your little dog. It's like a, it's like a the hook shot in Zelda. <laughs> My only concern is that the levels be able to hold up with the combat because I was having a lot of fun learning the combat and trying new things, but you really want to make sure the enemy AI is, in, is challenging you and that the level design is strong enough where you actually have fun things to do with all these abilities that you're gaining. Some of the levels look better than the other ones, like the intro level, which is in black and white. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. That I mean, just cool I touch, thought. Yeah. That whole intro scene, and then when you get kind of get infected with this kind of whatever it that's is. That's when the color pops out. That's when the cover in. pops yeah. out. Marlo. <coughs> Marlo one. Oh shit. Go ahead, we have you on the emergency channel. But then sometimes you'd go indoors and just everything looked the same and kind of just like the, almost, the color palette they chose was wrong. Like sometimes I was like, I was like man, this would kind of be cool if it's all black and white. Some of the visuals, like all they all look really detailed and good. I just think they kind of look, some of them look it's like a country of just derelict buildings and warehouses. Yeah, so it was just yeah, a lot of that. Which so that's one of the things we brought up and he said, you know, we're definitely gonna be throwing in more environments. And that was another big concern, which is art direction wise. It's their own engine they're using for the PS3 and 360. It was nice to see it running really smooth on PS3 as well. I couldn't tell a difference. Like, you know, I think it, the colors and, it, and everything popped a little bit more on 360, but it was hard to tell a big difference between the two. I you know, one thing we were talking about, you know, difference between PS3 and 360 was the six axis controller. We played Heavenly Sword nope. and we realized, which. They're not even changing, like, the name. No, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. So basically what you do is you, you can throw the glaive and then all of a sudden just basically steer it with the six axis, which 
It worked. I mean, it worked well on Heavenly Sword. I just think they did, overdid it in Heavenly Sword. So, so the thing in Heavenly Sword is you could throw that, and then you could fly as far as it would go. Basically, I mean, eventually it would stop. But the glaive, it's much shorter, like yeah. range. So it's a little different. Like at Heavenly Sword, if there's an enemy, you know, five feet in front of you, it was impossible to do that to kill him. But yeah. here, I think it's a lot more effective for short range, but not as far for, or not as good for, you know, guys across the room. This game can have multiplayer, but like, do you guys really think it needs multiplayer? Digital Extreme's last game was only multiplayer. Warpath. Yeah. That, that's what they do. They're used to doing that with every game they do, so I think in a certain sense, I can expect more from it than some games, but at the same time, like, this game is kind of... Okay, you know what the game... Player. Yeah, you know what the game is. You know you play with a guy with a glaive and you kind of rip everybody apart. I mean, do you really think anybody's gonna... Like, if they take some type of spin off that, whether it's a death match or kind of, you know, all versus one, do you really think that anybody's gonna stop playing a Call of Duty or a Halo for something like this? I mean, like, I mean, do we re do we really miss it in Bioshock? No, see, that's yeah. exactly that's a perfect so. Like, I think example, if you spend yeah. your if you in terms of resource management, if you're just gonna be able to create an unbelievable single player experience, you're not gonna need multiple. I'll be fine really with that. Know. Yeah. You know, it's so hard to nail a single player experience. They do single player and multiplayer at the same time. With a brand new IP, it's just really hard. See, that's the thing. This is pretty much their most ambitious game they've ever had. And every digital extreme game has not quite met its potential. It's been like, okay, we get excited about it. You know, they worked on Unreal back in the day, and then it's like, okay, it's not quite where we wanted it to be. Like, Pariah was like that, everything, like Warpath, all those. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see if, if they can kind of get over that hump, which it looked promising for single player. I mean, the concept to me is, is too generic, but the execution seems pretty solid. They delayed it for good reasons. Yep. Um, I think, you know, visually when you see the game, it's pretty stunning. Uh, lots and, of different enemy types. Yeah, lots of different enemy types. Uh, you know, and yeah, they, they definitely have stolen some stuff like the, you know, the uh, roadie run from Gears of oh, War. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, they, they they're integrated they're them do, really they're, well they're together. They're doing a good though. job, yeah. and, I, and I'm intrigued by the story. You know, I, I went from not really caring about this game at all exactly to going, all yeah. right, maybe, maybe this is one I should pay attention to. Yeah, I think that's the final part is like really great enemies and set pieces and levels. I think yeah. that, that comes together because the combat's there as far as I'm yeah, concerned. I think, I think the really combat's really there. <laughs> Do a good job of blending Resident Evil with Bioshock and uh, Gears of War. I will play your video game. And you can do it well. <laughs> it's, it's not, and maybe a little God of War in there. Yeah, absolutely. That would be okay with that. Second time you said that, I still don't really see it. What's, the, the, what's... Kill, the, the, the kills, the, the, the finishing moves at the. But it's just like a one-hit thing. It's, it's more like Turok does it than God of War. There's, All right, no, then there's no button pressing. Then, then Turok. No... All right, whatever. It's very gory. That's um, and maybe that's what I'm saying about the God of War reference. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm God. so sorry to insult your Kratos. I'm so sorry, Mr. God of War. Baby I'm Kratos. So sorry. How dare I insult exactly. the God wow. of War? You're in the wrong cubicle for that, man. <laughs> yeah, next thing you know, I mean, if I say something about, you know, wardrobe, they'll even get more mad at me or something. Seriously. I don't know. What it's a good thing you dress like him today, otherwise. I know. I don't want to yell that. I don't want to yell that again. <laughs> Come back next week. We'll talk about God of War. All right. Yeah. So, Shane, you know, I've been pretty down on Devil May Cry. I mean, you've gone to Japan a couple times to go game shows and just seen the game. And, you know, I always come, I see the footage, and I'm like, eh. You've this never really been a fan of Devil May Cry. Oh, no, I've, I've been a fan, but I just which never ones, thought. Okay, which ones have you played? I played them all, but I'm just saying that I've never, I didn't think, like, I was hoping like this big graphical leap when I saw Devil May, Devil May Cry 4. And when I first saw it, I was like, eh, not really. But I'd say after seeing it more and more and more, it's finally starting to look like, the game I was hoping it would be. Well, I think what happened was they showed the game really early, and you know we've been seeing this game for well over a year now, and it's come a long way. Like the same level that you saw when they first showed this at TGS two years ago, we're now seeing it. It looks a lot better. You're seeing how smooth it is, how much fun, how deep this game is. And people forget, Devil May Cry is a solid franchise. One and three are both like really, really good games. And this looks to be as good as those. Capcom came by with it um, a little while ago and we actually got to play both 360 and PS3. And the first thing I noticed, the PS3 one looked better to me. 
Really? Like I like it's funny like to see game see some games like that this you can tell this game is built for PS3. It's being moved over to 360. At least that's the impression I got when I saw the footage. I thought that as right now the PS3 version looks better and runs better than the 360 version. Like I saw a little screen tearing in the 360 version, and even like people who were playing it felt like it felt better on the PS3 controller. Well, that's what you've been hearing because of the bumpers and the triggers. The moves are easier to pull off on on the. DualShock 3 or the other six axis versus the 360 controller. Now the 360 version looks bad at all. I'm just saying like when they were going through, they were flipping through like the just the input so we could see the different levels. I felt that just crispness overall that I would buy I would buy the PS3 version as of right now. Let's hey, hear something different when it's time for a review. Yeah, this is the first game using their new engine. You know, we've seen Dead Rising, we've seen Lost Planet, and when like, you see how bad Lost Planet looks on PS3, and that's a port over from 360. They yeah, added between that and this, and see Devil May Cry be almost the same across both. It's encouraging to see Capcom finally is getting next gen development really ramped up and not just like up res PS2 kind of stuff. Yeah, personally, I think Devil May Cry 4 looks better than Ninja Gaiden 2. I agree, like when I when I finally got to see Ninja Gaiden 2, I was like, that's all there is? And sure, it's bloody, but it looks a lot like a Teen Ninja yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, I was like, just, I mean, size of the boss, like size of the bosses, I mean, you've all seen like the fire boss, you know, from all the past, but like we saw this like plant thing, it's just like, it's like move around the screen as fast as you can, you have to like open up its, like its hit point, like its weak spot, and like you use the Devil Bringer, like kind of bring you up to close it and you whack at it forever. It just, overall, it just, I thought, visually just wowed me more than Ninja Gaiden. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Glad I got your attention. I was beginning to feel a little ignored. You may jest, but the kindest fate I offer is to unify and spend eternity with a child of And one thing I noticed was weird was that, well, one thing I thought is Nero was gonna be the main character. He still is, but you do play 40% of the time with Dante. So he's, people who are like, oh, I wanna play as Dante, play as Dante. But how, how different are Nero and Dante? The fact they look almost identical. I mean, Nero, I, Nero has the special arm and that, that's what's make his gameplay different, correct? I think that's the big difference. Though. In terms of what he has, in terms of like his weapon set, is very limited. He has the Devil Bringer, and he has you know his his you know his one gun and stuff. But Dante's the one who has kind of all the tricks. Like he definitely has. Does Dante all the stuff. have all the uh, styles he had in DMC? 3? Yeah. So and the thing is now, remember you could only before a mission or at save points you could switch to different styles. You can actually change those on the fly. Well, yeah. The so fact, that, the fact that I mean, Devil May Cry has real time weapon switching and real time like form switching now. And you see Ninja Gaiden 2, you're still going to a sub screen, pausing the action, changing weapons. So it, it isn't as seamless. And like, I, because of that, I think DMC4 could actually out Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden 2 in terms of pure combat depth and gameplay and reaction times. Devil May Cry 2 is too easy. Devil May Cry 3 is way too hard. And one thing they're doing differently is now is there's a tutorial in the beginning. So actually, the game starts out with you fighting Dante as Nero. <laughs> So, you're looking to play, huh? Alright, I guess I got some time to kill. But then there's also this other mode, basically, I don't want to say it's like beginner mode, someone who maybe isn't as talented like at the Ninja Gaiden games or, you know, wants to kind of play more of just like God of War kind of hack and slash and go all the way through. It, there is a mode now for people who just want to, want to experience the Devil May Cry game and not aren't so into like coming up with the greatest combos in the world. So there is, the game seems like it's more user friendly and it's more mainstream. And, for the people who want it that way, which is, I think, is it's a nice, you know, nice alternative because they're so used to wanting to make the game so freaking hard, you know. So it's a nice kind of balance. One thing I wish had changed is the tone of the narrative. I mean, as much as I like Devil May Cry, the story and the cutscenes is just laughable. It's bullshit. Like the seriously, it's the same stupid one-liners. All the dumb characters come back, Lady and Trish. Like the world of May Cry is kind of take it or leave it. I'm new. Gloria. I don't know, but you, are you really playing for that for the for the story? Nah. Maybe cosplay people are. You're Nero, right? I've heard rumors. Hasn't everyone? Quite a few, in fact, and none too flattering. So, what's the deal? Where are they coming from? It's strange. No matter the number you kill, more will come. 
but yeah, playing for the action, the graphics, the, you know, it's it's just a fast, fun game, and you're, you haven't really played anything like this, like, no, not in a while, not, you know? Not in a long time, I mean. I think this game is going to take a lot of people by surprise. I mean, Devil May Cry 1 was a huge hit, it was one of the first big character action games on PlayStation, a lot of people played PlayStation 2, but DMC 2, not as good, so it lost some fans, and DMC 3 was so hard that people slept on and never played the special edition. So it's been a long time since DMC was like on everyone's mind, and I think this game's gonna come out early next year, be very solid. There's really nothing even like it on Xbox 360. So I think it's gonna be big. I can't wait. I really, I'm really excited for it. I, I'm, I was so down on it and like depressed when I first saw it, but like more and more I see it, especially after this time, I think it just looks really awesome. <laughs> Getting better. I would even go as far as to say that I underestimated your abilities. You got the issues. Dude, hot off the press, man. This is, nice. Thanks for those screens. Long time coming. Remember we got to play this? Dude, it's, it's fun. Awesome. Weird looking, but fun. So anyway, you want to go to Maya? I'm going to go get a burrito. Yeah, let's go get some lunch, dude. Oh, oh wait, don't bring that, Jason. Oh, shit. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up, man? I heard new issues out. Any more copy chain? Uh, I haven't seen any. No, nah, in a week or so, um, you can buy it at the newsstand. Are you serious? I saw somebody down the hall had one. We're out. So... I didn't get one. No, but there's a screenshot on one up. There's a news story. You, yeah. can, you can read about it there, dude. It's cool. Yeah, did you read I the news story? Yeah, I saw it. Why, why is Ken and Ryu so fat? Uh, just, it's different. It's new. Just read, read about it, dude. I can't, I don't want to talk. Okay, yeah. I can't really talk about it. Just, Come on. Just be sure Come to, on. like, watch one up for the next couple weeks. You guys it's can't cool. tell me anything? No, dude. We gotta uh, go Come on, why? I'm hungry. Dude, just be dude. patient. I just, I just need to know if I should care. Of course you should care. It's Street Fighter, man. What the fuck? <laughs> 